Welcome to what I would say is the camera comparison of the year 1 we got the 3 companies that I would say make the best smartphone cameras and these are pretty much their best models welcome to Huawei P40 Pro vs Galaxy S20 Ultra vs iPhone 11 prompt max students to get one thing straight the P40 Pro strength is ready in photos but just before we get to that the company have made improvements to video to all 3 phones can record 4K video at 60 frames per second the Samsung can even do 8K but that comes with its own set of caveats and I wouldn't really recommend using it anyways when you're just filming standard video in the daytime but the main differentiator is really just the style that each company's opted for iPhone sticks closest to reality Samsung takes that reality and adds a little bit of extra vibrance and Huawei's is just a little bit different gone are the days when Huawei just took the saturation slider and worked it up to max settings the P40 Pro's output anything is actually the least saturated in a lot of cases it's similar to the iPhones but almost a little bit fainter and if you look at the bright areas you can see it does occasionally overexpose this brightness though may well be in part because of its huge camera sensor which lets a ton of light in and so when you're in the dark this potential weakness turns into a strength and it's pretty much a case of the darker you go the further behind the other to four so let's go really dark the kind of darkness where Samsung's video is looking like a pot paw or e of pixels and the iPhones well you can barely see anything I'm also going to drop the prices of each of these phones on screen right now just the UK price just to give you an idea of how they stack up relative to each other the P40 Pro is also very snappy when focusing the phone has a new actor phase detection autofocus system but to be honest the iPhone can keep up and can actually do so with a smoother focusing system Samsung's phone has improved since launch but I mean it's not great and here's some selfie video it's kind of amazing we've got smartphone for here that can take phenomenal video on their front cameras and what are the first things you might be able to tell is that always dialed up the audio quality on their phones and their eye noise reduction is now fantastic also and this of things that always improved you've got the fact that the company has really pushed the quality of its zoom and its ultra light which you can see here but they've both come in slight caveats for example while was using an ultra wide camera built specifically to take cinematic video then so the output looks great and really consistent with its main camera compare that to Samsung where the quality falls and the phone kind of punches up the contrast to try and compensate the trade-off for Huawei is that this ultra wide isn't really ultra wide okay the zoom cameras add an even more interesting layer of complexity to this because before we and Samsung are fantastic this right here is at six times magnification and if you take a look at the ducks here you can see that hallways even edges out Samsung's space zoom more if you want of those people you could just screw it and zoom in 15 times and it's cool that you can do that and still get well I wouldn't call it sharp video but a serviceable video the iPhone keeps it together but is noticeably less crisp than the other two but here's the twist you could argue that for most of the time you zoom you'll probably be zooming two to four times and in those cases you'll actually get better quality from the iPhone with the other two we're not quite magnified enough to activate their telephoto cameras so at this stage they're forced to just use using digital zoom with their main cameras and it's not pretty now almost every clip you've seen so far was actually taken handheld so you don't need telling the stabilization is a plus on all three of these phones but what if you stopped moving well if you're filming at 4k resolution a gentle walk is fine it'll look good on all three but if we up the pace then the p40 and iphone's footage starts to fall apart there's just too much motion for them to handle if you lower that resolution to 1080p each phone improves but samsung is king of stabilization i should say though that what why i want you to do with video is use its ultra wide angle camera that was built for situations like this so if you switch to that then even at 4k it does a pretty good job okay so just before i get to slow motion i'm itching to address the elephant in the room photo quality and this is where Huawei shines you might well know that past phones from the company have had some let's say interesting color processing algorithms but it definitely feels like this has been tweaked to focus on natural shots with again as with video the slightly faded look on default settings one thing that becomes quite apparent here is the sheer size of the sensors on Huawei and Samsung large sensors equals big 
depth of field or in other words crisp foregrounds and nicely blurred backgrounds you're almost taking photos that look like portrait mode shots without actually needing to use fake portrait mode if you actually do use portrait mode like here you can obviously have as much background blur as you want and I'd say iPhones have been the gold standard for portrait mode for a while and even though Huawei has made leaps and bounds that doesn't change here all phones take good quality ultra wide photos during the day at least but is with video quite apparent as Huawei's not so wide angle Samsung and Apple shots are just more dramatic zoom when taking photos is maybe the most interesting part of this comparison on paper you might think that who always got this one in the bag after all it has a 5 times optical zoom versus Samsung's 4 times but not quite Samsung zoom camera may have less magnification but it has a higher resolution so for photos when you start zooming in crazy numbers Samsung has more room to crop inside its image the big question though for a lot of people is which one captures more detail the Huawei has a 50 megapixel main camera Samsung has a 108 megapixel one and Apple 12 so if you take a max resolution shot on each and crop all the way and the result is about what it sounds like on paper but here's the thing almost all the time you won't be capturing max resolution photos they take time to process they suck up a ton of your storage and they have less dynamic range so by default all phones are set to a much lower resolution 12.5 5 megapixel on Huawei and 12 for the other two so in terms of general photo detail there really isn't that much in it but wait there's another twist a lot of the photos I take and I'm sure are the ones that you take they're not in ideal lighting conditions and as soon as you start moving away from daylight hallway steam rolls if we crop into this shot here there's an immediate difference in how much information is being captured if we go darker that trend is somewhat exaggerated again this is not using the night mode on the phones just auto the only thing I would say about woe is that it sometimes can slightly overcompensate on cool tones when shooting in low light what about night mode then so each of these phones comes with a night mode that lets you hold them steady for a few seconds and capture more information and to give you an idea this is that same photo taken using night mode on all three back to normal and night modes you can probably tell the iPhone sees the biggest immediate gain from this piece of software and will always barely change so to reiterate if you're just shooting on auto mode on all the phones P40 feels like a literal generation ahead if you are gonna use night mode though the providing things aren't too dark all three are great then to be honest which smartphones photos you prefer is more of a style thing as opposed to one being explicitly better than the others but if you get really dark then something starts acting up when things get so dark that Samsung can't draw out finer details then rather than just keeping the image dark like the iPhone does it has a tendency in night mode to just brighten anyways and I think it looks pretty odd I tried this on both Exynos and Snapdragon S20 Ultras and they behaved similarly no this image was taken in almost pitch black you can't tell nightmare on smartphones is getting good but what I wanted to show here is how always focused on making all of its cameras good not just its main one but for example flicking into ultra wide the difference is just phenomenal especially when compared to the iPhone and I love this idea that I can use with whichever lens I want to to suit the shot I'm trying to capture as opposed to feeling like I need to use my main camera because my ultra wide sucks the same goes for zoom this is using the 5 times zoom in pitch black like I couldn't see what the P40 Pro is seeing right now the S20 Ultra and iPhone aren't too pretty however there are two ways to deal with the dark one is night mode sure but the other one is flash and Chloe has added an insanely bright flash module onto its phone of course bright is good but if it's too bright and the software doesn't deal with it accordingly you end up with photos like these the camera tends to severely underexpose to try and compensate for the extra brightness the detail is still there if you manually brighten it it looks good but no matter how hard I tried to take this photo it would always come out dark on Huawei alright let's slow things down for a minute literally all three phones can take slow motion footage to varying degrees you've got continuous slow motion up to 240 frames per second and I think on balance the iPhone takes the nicest looking slow motion footage but the other two can do something that the iPhone can't shoot bursts of super slow motion footage and you're only telling that the P40 Pro has inherited the frankly nuts super slow motion from the May 230 Pro last year it's so slow it is unreal you could almost say it's borderline boring to watch but with this kind of frame rate your entire perspective on the world is different Tabble and Samsung all 
also lets you take slow motion on your front cameras it's cool to have I guess I've not used it once outside of a testing environment but that brings me to the front cameras generally and it's never been a closer battle when it comes to selfies Huawei edges out on detail but for most people I don't think that's a biggie for front facing photos and they've all got an awesome selfie portrait mode. So which phone do you think one who always phone is still on early software so it might improve but my conclusion is that iPhone is still the king for a video but its leader is shrinking over its Android counterparts and also that my favorite phone for photos is now the P40 Pro. Thanks for watching sub will be awesome and see you on my next video.